Welcome to Bible Track Echoes. This program is the radio ministry of Bible Tracks Incorporated. Our mission is to take the Word of God to all the world. Our Bible teacher is the director of Bible Tracks, Pastor Mark Smith. Since 1938, Bible Tracks Incorporated has been publishing clear gospel tracks and supplying them to churches, missionaries, and individuals all over the world and all at no charge. Information on how you can receive a free sample pack of our tracks will be given at the end of this broadcast. Now for our Bible study, here is our teacher, Pastor Mark Smith. How do you do, my friend? Welcome to the Tuesday edition here at Bible Tract Echoes, and every Tuesday has the same title. We call our Tuesday broadcast this way, A Tract and Truth Tuesday, and welcome to Tract and Truth Tuesday. That word tract is spelled T-R-A-C-T because this ministry of Bible Tract Echoes is the radio arm of a larger ministry called Bible Tracts Incorporated, and that word tracts refers to an evangelism tool, a short written presentation of the gospel of Christ. It's a powerful tool, and we try to encourage people to use gospel tracts, and we give them away free all over the world. I've got one of our gospel tracts here in front of me. I want to tell you about it in a moment. I also have my Bible open to First. Corinthians chapter 16. If you can, stop, get your Bible out. 1 Corinthians 16. Now, listen, friend, on our Tract and Truth Tuesday broadcast, I often share a personal event where I use the tract to share the gospel. Many of you, as I'm out in churches preaching, talk about how you really enjoy those stories. Well, friend, I enjoy the stories. I enjoy telling the gospel. Now, other Tuesdays, I use those to try to sharpen our skills in you and I actually verbally telling the gospel to a lost person in a one-on-one, eyeball-to-eyeball setting. Well, today, neither one of these is my focus. I want to use today's broadcast to share how I was encouraged personally as I was recently in a local church, and then I want to share about an open door that looks like is coming our way. To that end, my verse for the broadcast is found in 1 Corinthians 16. It's verse 9. If you happen to attend a strong uh, missionary-minded church, if that's a strong emphasis at your church, and you have missionaries that come through and speak with any kind of regularity, then most likely you've heard a missionary preach from 1 Corinthians 16, 9. Let me read it to you right now. The verse says this, For a great door and effectual is open unto me, and there are many adversaries. In a moment, I want to tell about that local church who saw an open door, a door that was effectual and how God blessed. And then I want to share an open door that seems to be facing us here at Bible Tracks Incorporated. You be ready. This is a great day to be listening to this broadcast. I mentioned a moment ago, I have one of our gospel tracts in my hand, and I said it's kind of funny that this would be the one for today because it's entitled, He Is Not Here. He is not here. On the front face of it are some Easter lilies. Now, I know what week it is that this broadcast is being designed for. This is the week right after Thanksgiving, so uh, since the rest of the world is talking about Christmas already, and they have for a while, let's just jump over to Easter shall we? The word Easter does not appear in this track. What this track is about is the resurrection of Jesus Christ because the resurrection is a critical truth point of the gospel. I don't make that up. It's found in 1 Corinthians 15, how that the gospel was how Christ died for our sins, was buried, and rose again. It's the part of a gospel message. It's all over the book of Acts as it was preached as the church began there after the day of Pentecost and went forward. Here's a track that many people use, yes, at Easter time. It's got those Easter lilies on it, but this track, He Is Not Here, is not just an Easter track. It's a gospel track. You use it all year long. I use it. It talks about the fact that Jesus, the Lord Jesus Christ, is the right man to be our Savior. He's the risen man, but he must be the received man. This track is so clear. I mean, it's easy to read and it's clear. You need to have this track. You really do. At the end of the broadcast, my announcer will make known three ways by which you can contact us. Be ready with pen and paper. 
One of those ways is our website. Our web address is BibleTracksInc.org. If you can't stay to the end of the broadcast, use that address, BibleTracksInc.org. Well, let me read our verse again. 1 Corinthians 16, 9. For a great door and effectual is opened unto me, and there are many adversaries. Now, friend, this verse is expressing the heart of the Apostle Paul. He writes to the believers in the town of Corinth and tells them that he hopes to see them soon and he wants to spend time with them, but for the moment, visiting them has to be put on hold. It must be pushed to the back burner. Why? Because a ministry opportunity is before him, and that's what he means by this open door reference. It's a gospel opportunity. It's a great door, the verse says, it's a, which means it's a large door. The gospel impact there would be huge. Plus, he calls this a door that is effectual. Now, the idea here behind that word effectual is that the potential for a great success is high. Oh, it's going to take hard work. Gospel work does, but the result is that multitudes will come to Christ. Now, that's evident by what he says. So, what does Paul do? He postpones his heart desire to visit the Corinthians so he can serve in this open door for a large gospel harvest. Now, friend, that's the heart of a missionary right there. Let me stop here and tell you about that church I mentioned that encouraged my heart. My wife and I were recently in a church which had, I'm guessing, about 120 people there that Sunday morning. But less, hear me now, less than 10% of that church includes people that grew up in a Bible-preaching church. Over 90% had come to Christ out of a life of drugs and alcohol. And for 21 years, I think it was, that pastor and his wife worked like dogs. I mean, they worked hard to deal with some really messy, ugly sinners. I'm not talking about their facial ugliness, the sin ugliness of their lives. They worked with them and they got saved and became saints. But it was a huge door of opportunity. It was a great honor for me to preach there. But frankly, few pastors would have looked at this sin-dented town and seen an open door to a great gospel work. But this ministry couple did, and what a blessing to be there. It was huge. I was a, I'd go back there any day of the week. And that church has people that listen to the broadcast, and they know who they are. God bless you. But now, let me tell you about the open door for Bible tracks. The day before I made this broadcast... I got a phone call from the country of Thailand. In that country, there is a fair number of people working there who are from the country of Pakistan. The Thai believers have been trying to share Christ with the Pakistani workers. Uh, finally, the Thai leaders, they got a hold of some Christian leaders from the country of Pakistan and said, would you come and help us and show us how to reach these Pakistanis with the gospel? Well, when the Pakistani believers came, they brought some of our gospel tracts, which they printed in their own country, we print about 1.3 million every year in Pakistan. Well, the Thai Christians had never gotten involved in using literature to do evangelism. And as the Thai believers saw how the Pakistani leaders were going door to door and handing these gospel tracts out in the marketplaces and so on, the Thai believers got excited. The Thai believers took the tracts and they began to translate them into the Thai language. <laughs> That's when I got the phone call. Those Pakistani leaders, they're friends of mine. They called and said, Brother Mark, you had better get ready. These Thailand Christians are going to call you. They're going to ask you to print tracts inside of, the, of Thailand. <laughs> now, friend, does that excite me? Absolutely, it excites me. I get excited when God's people have a vision and see an open door, a great and effectual door open to do gospel work. Yes, it excites me. It excites me, yes, that they want to use our tracks. These Thai saints see an open door. I love believers who are this way. All of this is just going to take us some new money. Now, we don't print money here. You, it's illegal. We can't do that. So I don't mean new money by the fact that it's newly printed. 
I mean that we're going to have to find new ways to pay for this upcoming printing, this open door that's going to happen. See, right now, all of our funds are already allocated to provide tracks in other places around the world as well as here in our own country. But this is a great door is open in front of us. It's soon going to have to be either, well, do or don't do and take advantage of this open door. Would you pray with us about this open door? Would you really? I do believe it's a great door. I believe it's a factual door. The potential for success in this largely Buddhist country. Now, Pakistan is about 95% Muslim, but Thailand is about 90% Buddhist. Now, but don't forget, don't forget, the gospel verse we read, 1 Corinthians 16, 9, says that with gospel opportunities, with these great open doors, comes also many adversaries. The Thai believers, they were already battling with Buddhists who didn't want the gospel message and the Christian community to grow. But then God brought them these people from Pakistan, and now they're trying to minister to among the Muslim people as well. And they found a new tool they think will just magnify the impact of the gospel. They're called tracks. Hey, friend, do you have a vision, personal vision, to do gospel work? Do you hear about people telling the gospel and you say, wow, that's great. I wish I could do that. Do you hear about people handing out tracks and you say, wow, that's great. I wish I could do that. But you don't do that. Do do you not have a vision for what God can do? with the gospel. You see, the power of the gospel is not in you. It's not, frankly, in your personal walk with Jesus. On a scale of one to 10, let's say the scale of one to 10, 10 means that you are the most powerful uh, believer since the apostle Paul, and the number one means you are pretty, well, pathetic in your walk with Jesus. But somewhere you would plot yourself. I don't care if you're a one, because you see, the power of the gospel is not in the worker. It's in the word of God. I can give the gospel tract to a seven-year-old. He can go out, pass them out, because the power of the gospel is in the word of God. Faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. It's not an issue of how slick your gospel presentation is. It's not an issue of how pretty the track is. You put God's word in the hand of a lost person and let loose the prayer undergirding all that and watch what the Spirit of God will do. Now, friend, you need a vision for gospel work and the power of the gospel. It'll change your life as you tell the gospel with greater intensity, but you're going to see people come to Christ. Oh, not everybody, but some are going to come to Christ. I know that because the gospel works wherever it is tried. You need our gospel tracks. In a moment, my announcer is going to give our mailing address, phone number, and website. Please let us become partners with you and doing gospel work, a great door, an effectual is open unto us. Yes, there's adversaries, but we have the power of the Creator God behind us and His written, eternal, perfect Word. Let's go with the gospel. Thank you for joining us today for Bible Tract Echoes. If you would like to receive a free sample packet of our tracks, You can contact us by calling 309-828-6888. Our mailing address is Bible Tracks, P.O. Box 188, Bloomington, Illinois, 61702. Again, our phone number is 309-828-6888. And our mailing address is P.O. Box 188, Bloomington, Illinois, 61702. You can also contact us through our website. Our web address is BibleTracksInc.org. Remember, the word tracks is spelled T-R-A-C-T-S. That address is BibleTracksInc.org. May the Lord richly bless you as you serve Him.